So what happens when your life story gets turned into a movie? Stay tuned to This, That, and Theology and find out. Hi, you're watching This, That, and Theology, where we talk about your worldview and the worldview around you and how they interact. This week, the movie Unsung Hero hit theaters. Now, this film is the true life story, or mostly true life story, of the Smallbone family. The most prominent member of that family was, at one point, Rebecca St. James, and is now the two front men for the band For King and Country. Just in time for Mother's Day, they've released a film about their first few months, first year or so, here in the United States after coming from Australia. And the unsung hero that the title of the film is uh, referencing is their mother, Helen. That being said, as you watch the film, you may realize that the story, while focusing around Helen as the rock-solid part of the family, she's not who the story is really about. While the movie definitely wants to honor the mom, and they do, the film really isn't about Helen. If anything, I would say the movie is about David. One of the keys to understanding what a movie or story is about is to look at the person who changes. And while the unsung hero in this film is definitely the mom who's rock solid, trusting in God and encouraging her family to do the same, the person who changes in this film the most is David who, ironically, is being played by one of his sons. At the beginning of the film, you see the confidence that David has working diligently to provide for his family. The house that they're living in in Australia is impressive. They have a beautiful yard, the family is growing, and they have no needs that aren't being met. However, in a moment, all of that changes, and that sends David into a spiral of depression, really questioning his own worth as a man, as a father, as a husband, even as a son. As time after time, his ability to provide for his family in the way that he knows best is challenged, he gets deeper and deeper into depression, feeling frustrated and even angry that people would give him things that he couldn't provide. Ultimately, what we see in David is pride, and it takes a lot to break him of that pride. Here at This, That, and Theology, we try to examine films in two areas. Number one, is the film good enough to actually see? Is it a good film? But number two, is this a film that has something for us to talk about? Is this a film that merits our watching because of either the conversations that we'll have about a contrasting worldview or one that honors and exemplifies one. This is one of those films that is definitely the latter, and it's very well done. One of my big concerns about the Christian film industry in general has been that Christian films have just not been good. I've been pleased that there have been films like Jesus Revolution and now Unsung Hero that definitely break that mold. The film is well-directed, cinematography is excellent, and the acting is pretty good especially considering that some of them are not full-time actors, including David himself. But more importantly than that, the attitudes and the actions in this film, especially by the church and by the kids, exemplify what it means to trust God. The church, seeing the needs of someone in their own family, sacrificially give to provide for the things that they just don't have. That kind of generosity should be the norm in churches. The journey that David takes from pride to humility to eventually trusting God, even for the little things, is felt throughout the whole thing. Now, this is a true story, and so seeing their success is exciting and amazing and true, but that's not going to be the case for everyone. For many of us, trusting God means that despite the fact we're never going to get the things that we really wish we could get, we still trust God in all of those things. In Luke chapter 12, Jesus tells the parable of the foolish rich man. He's foolish not because he's successful, he's foolish because he's only thinking about the here and now, he's not thinking about eternity. Jesus continues on with his disciples saying that, I clothe the fields more beautifully than Solomon would ever have been dressed in. I feed the birds of the air even though they're only worth pennies. How much more will I take care of you who I love? And part of that explanation is also saying that we can be generous because we know that God is in control. God has promised to provide for his people. Those kinds of things are shown throughout this film. One of my favorite moments in the film involves a bunch of post-it notes that they put on the wall. They have things they're praying for and things that they're thankful for. And oftentimes what they do is that once God has provided the thing they've been praying for, they move it to the thankful side of the board. At one moment, one of the kids is praying that God would make 
groceries cheaper. The dad thinks that this is silly. God's not going to change the price of groceries. Yet they put it on the board and they start praying for it. And lo and behold, while they're cleaning out somebody's house, they find pages of coupons from the newspaper, which they take to the grocery store. And to the kid's amazement, he watches as the price of food gets cheaper, a way that God has provided. Sometimes God answers our supernatural needs in the most ordinary of ways, even down to a coupon. I was surprised at how much I enjoyed this film, and I'm really glad that I went to see it on opening night. I encourage all of you to go do the same. This is a film that has a lot to talk about, a lot that exemplifies what the Christian walk is like, something that we should model and give God glory for at every moment. You may not be a fan of Rebecca St. James or For King and Country, but I can tell you, you should be a fan of Unsung Hero. Thank you for watching This, That, and Theology. I hope you've enjoyed this. hope this has been beneficial. If it has, give a like, drop a comment, let us know. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on This, That, and Theology. It's going to be dangerous and scary. And giving up, giving in, it's not an option. Whatever your dream is, I know you can achieve it. Please welcome... Dream is to be like you. It always has been.